there is nothing worse that can happen to us. Also, that means if you ever put us in a situation where we have to think like it's going back to that time, then we have nothing to lose. We will fight like people have nothing to lose. No, we, we, we carry our own burden. We, we, we know our burden we have to carry, but making me carry somebody else's burden is going to be a problem. It's really going to be a problem. It, it won't happen. Um, so, for the defense of this country, when we are right, when we are attacked, I don't ask anybody's permission. Hate speech. What place should they, these people who propagate hate speech, what, what? In this world, what are they, what role are they playing, really? To produce hundreds of refugees, hundreds of thousands, here in Rwanda and in the neighboring countries, in Uganda I think there are about 300 or 400,000. And to the world this is normal. Yeah, that is how it happened here when uh, uh, people are being killed. Here in 94, some people are saying, no, 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 this is, uh, it's like, <laughs> these are the savages of, of Africa killing each other. Some people are saying that. We are savages killing each other. So it doesn't need to be treated as urgent. So even uh, having 100,000 Refugees and others crossing every day. There are people crossing, by the way, from Eastern Congo to Rwanda. This is normal. If they have to talk about any people at all, it is maybe displaced. Displaced, yeah, they can talk about, meaning those who are still in Eastern Congo, uh, but displaced. Maybe there is a sympathy for those, a little bit. Those who are being forced, by the way, forced to cross the border and come here as refugees to create a situation that in the end will find justification and may be accepted that actually those people should live there. It's like these are Rwandans who have returned home. So let them stay there. So in the end, they create some fact that we should contend with and accept. Really? Well, if it wasn't for that 
we act reasonably, that we respect norms, international norms and laws and everything, and painfully accept this mess that is being created and hopefully waiting for some some of those powerful people to, to address this matter. Maybe it would be right to actually create a situation where we push them back and uh, those responsible should protect them. But, uh, so, among those refugees, there are those who have been here for the last 22, now 3, 23 years, in a refugee camp. Well, those are like the years I spent uh, in a refugee camp myself. So I, I, I know what it means. Myself, I spent those same years in a refugee camp. So, who is in charge of what? In this world, who, who, who now does what? Now, now there comes the Eastern Congo conflict as, as such. One, you try to do some research, do some inquiries, you do some intelligence. Rwanda did not in any way create this war that is happening in Eastern Congo. You, you, for me, I'm giving a fact. Go and investigate and prove me wrong. Rwanda never got involved in starting this fighting that has happened in Eastern Congo. But with time, there has been an effort to actually make it our war that we are the ones who started it. Over time, this is what has happened. Now, using what? If you see the combination of hate speech and the displacement of these people, you come to understand what actually was behind it. Maybe somebody thought they were being smart and they thought that was the, end, uh, the way to end the M23 problem, which was there in 2012, by, because there is ethnic cleansing pushing these Tutsis to Rwanda to belong there because that's where they belong. And uh, Kagame is a Tutsi, he's the president of Rwanda. Let, 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 let them go and join their, their president. This is what is behind it. One time uh, we, we, we had a meeting and we were having an argument with the leaders. And, and of course there was a contradiction in some of these people's argument. I asked specifically, I said, and that's that one responsible for Congo. I said, we are not going to address anything unless you come out clearly to tell us facts about this situation. I asked him, 
I said, are these people in M23 Congolese or not? And he said to me, and there were other leaders in the meeting, that absolutely, these are Congolese. Then he came out to say that he has, in fact, even openly talked about it. I think when he was in the US or UK, I don't remember what he said, that he came out and said it. So he was confirming that these are Congolese. I said, fine. So how do they become our problem? How do they become Rwanda's problem? I also asked him, I said, do you know when, when these people, the group that started this fighting, do you know where they came from? In fact, before he answered, the president of the country where they came from is the one who said it. He said, yeah, no, 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 actually they came from, uh, this man refused to solve their problems and they decided to cross the border and go back where they belong. So I then asked him again, I said, so how do you, how do you keep associating Rwanda with this problem? I even asked him, I said, why did you the other day bomb our territory because they had been uh, sharing with artillery, have artillery across the border onto our territory in, in Kinigi. There are people here who know it. I said, why? why? What, do you, what are you doing? What do you want? And he just said, no, but this, you know, they should go back. I said, go back where? <laughs> Those who came here, uh, they were about between 500 and 600. When they ran away on 2013, 2012, 2013, there are those who crossed and came here, they were about between 500 and 600 fighters with their arms. What we did, we put them in a camp uh, in uh, what is this former Kibungu? Eh? Ngoma areas. That's why I put them as refuge. And we removed the arms, actually handed them back, handed back the arms to government in Kinshasa. This they know, they can't even deny. Uh, they said they had wanted to solve the problem politically. They invited uh, some of the leaders of this group, took them to Kinshasa, that they were supposed, they wanted to talk to them and resolve the problem. These people, the leaders of this group, went to Kinshasa, they are put in a hotel, spent five months without seeing anybody to talk to them until they left. Of course, they left heavy bills behind in the, in the hotel. Nothing else. Now, but when you see, then you, you would see them in the, <laughs> you saw the, 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 in the statements of different organizations and so, blaming Rwanda for M23 conflict in Eastern Congo. I cannot tell you the reasons exactly why that would be happening. Now, but I would ask people so, you may associate us with M23, you may blame us for everything, M23, what do you say about FDRR that is in Eastern Congo for the last 30 years, more or less? 
I thought even the forces, the UN forces that were put in, 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 in Eastern Congo or in Congo were put there to actually address this problem and maybe other problems, but this one was the main one. But you've been there for decades. It has been so costly, but the problem is still there. And then some of them tried. The government said, no, 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 they are not there. You know, we don't have a there. And then we would give them names. But these are the readers, one, two, three, so and so and so and so and so. They are in this location. In fact, I, I one time told the president of DRC, now, I said, you don't know that these people are there in this place, in this place, in that place, and they've been even mining roadblocks and they collect taxes. He says, he... so he remembered. <laughs> he remembered that that has been happening. So I said, so what are we talking about? You have FDRR who have taken over territories in Eastern Congo and are collecting taxes. And you are telling me they are not there? So anyway, when all this came to some point, and this war was raging, and uh, this time it turned into where the government in Kinshasa wanted to they mobilize the people. They thought they would now throw M23, push them into Rwanda. And, and this still remains, by the way, the, the aim. This is the goal. So I told our friends, these powerful friends of ours, I've even said it publicly. When it comes to defending this country that has suffered for so long and nobody came to the help, I don't need the permission from anybody. <laughs> to do what we have to do to protect ourselves. I will say it in broad daylight. I have said it to those who matter in this problem. And that's what is going to happen. You, 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 can, you go home, sleep, you know, don't do anything. There will be nothing crossing these borders of this small country of ours. If it, anybody attempts, <laughs> so, Nimugati uh, Nibitumbarae. Sometimes, Birimubusa. You know, a balloon. A balloon, you, you need a needle. Just if you are a very movie, okay, we're going to be a And I'm saying this not only that. Where we have been, uh, 30 years ago, there is nothing worse that can happen to us. Also, 
That means if you ever put us in a situation where we have to think like it's going back to that time, then we have nothing to lose. We will fight like people have nothing to lose. And somebody will pay the price other than ourselves. You have seen, I have not answered these insults that uh, are coming from the south, from the west. Those ones don't kill. So I cannot <laughs> go, mm -mm. that's not us. But they will learn something with time. They learn something that they made a big mistake. Absolutely. Big mistake. That's why um, I was telling uh, the young people, happily who seem to be like in those years when we were still young, I've seen uh, our young people uh, they are really ready to, to fight for and defend this country. Uh, so, but we don't provoke any situation. We don't, uh, in fact, we've even refused to be provoked. We are provoked and we, We ignore it for as long as it hasn't crossed a certain line. But the rest, these are just words, people talking and here and there, blaming us for everything and making us carry the, the, our own burden, but also other people's burden. <laughs> No, we, we, we carry our own burden. We, we, we know our burden we have to carry, but making me carry somebody else's burden is going to be a problem. It's really going to be a problem. It, it won't happen. Um, so, for the defense of this country, when we are right, when we are attacked, I don't ask anybody's permission. Not at all. Um, so, the country is safe, is secure, and will always be. Those who are excited and uh, because I'm told uh, the, what you see happening in the West and then in the South, they are busy collecting uh, some, some, the other poor Rwandans uh, who went out making noise and uh, they are trying to turn them into some leaders in the future of this country. 